games predict the cryptocurrency to reach levels as high as $250,000. Can someone tell me where the party's at? Make it rain money from the sky, robberies in the back. Yeah. In the city, when bitty hit and too fitty, when lady, and if you with me, we did it, yeah, that's a matter of fact. Yeah, ain't no rapping racks, we be stacking sacks. Where the party at? All week, no sleep, going back to back. Like when that bitty dip, vroom, vroom, run it back. We has no chance, we'll make it. That's when we're dead, but it's shaking yeah. We old, never sold, be faithful Got a party, the fairy tale Can someone tell me where the party's at? Make it rain money from the sky, robbers in the back yeah. In the city, when bitty, here and too pretty When lady, and if you with me, we did it Yeah, that's a matter of fact That's a matter of fact Yeah, that's a matter of fact Bitcoin after party is going to be f***ing wild! See you in New York City, baby. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome. It is 1.25 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, I've got a... The first thing I'm going to do is a paid segment, but you're going to like this, okay? Uh, and it'll give time for the, you know, the everybody to get into the chat and, and kind of get into the live, and then after that... Uh, I've got some craziness that you're really not going to believe. You've probably already seen it already based off of the views of the video that I was I was sent uh, and watched. So I'm going to give that gentleman full credit. Uh, but first, before we get into that, I'm going to I'm going to pay some bills with a paid segment that you should pay attention to because this could be the very beginning of something that I think you're really going to like. Okay, honestly. Um, so, and all the descriptions and the links and everything are, are down below, uh, but uh, let's get this one going. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You just got my live intro, because we are live, but this is going to be a pre-recorded segment. Uh, this is a paid segment, but I think you're going to dig this, because this is unlike anything I've seen before, and uh, I am being paid to talk about it, but I was paid to talk about it before I even knew what it was, and, and then I, it came in, and I'm like... Okay, cool. So I started researching it, um, and I'm going to show you some cool stuff. Now, this is something, like I said, that I've never seen before. Uh, if you're into VPNs, basically masking your identity online or basically being able to look at uh, content and things uh, across the globe without being IP restricted, um, you know, maybe you're traveling somewhere and you're trying to access something that you would normally be able to access at home, but uh, for whatever reason you can't and you need to use something. Something like a VPN this may be what you're looking for um, this is pretty new and they're still in testing but I'm gonna start with a brief video that's gonna go over the technology and then we're gonna dive into the website the token associated with it and we're gonna go a little deeper from there and then you guys can do your own due diligence and make your decisions as to whether or not this is something that you feel is promising personally if this all turns out to be legit I think this might be worth it. They might be on something. Okay, that's, that's all I'm going to say for now. But let's check this out. With each day that goes by, our world gets more and more connected. Technology progresses, but so does government and big tech overreach. Censorship, data tracking, and monetization of your private and sensitive digital fingerprint. Global unrest grows as people wake up and realize they are not sheep on a farm to be tracked and sold, but sovereign individuals with freedoms and rights. Workers, creators, innovators, consumers. Access to a free and open internet is an unalienable right. Your privacy and quest for information should be untethered and unregulated. Anonymity when you need it, publicity when you want it. Introducing Mask. Mask combines the benefits of a VPN and Tor technology to create a superior next generation privacy software where users are rewarded for supporting an uncensored global web. Users gain privacy and anonymity while helping promote internet freedom. Regardless of where you are or who you are, Mask will allow you to access content from any part of the globe while remaining undetectable to malicious parties. While VPNs have end-to-end -end encryption, they're also privatized corporations that can allow data tracking within their encryption. 
With Mask, your internet searches are scattered across every node available and reassembled at the destination, encrypted the entire way. This makes your personal browsing virtually untraceable to anyone wanting to censor what you can and cannot see. By running Mask, you can also earn cryptocurrency. Connect your Ethereum wallet and serve as a node while you're not consuming to help provide internet freedom and reap rewards along the way. Mask is much more than just another blockchain VPN. It's a bleeding edge networking protocol that provides a foundation for a privacy based ecosystem. It's best referred to as a decentralized mesh network, a world's first in its design. A mesh network has connections to multiple users. That's why the network is powered from users all across the world. Simply put, by running Mask, a user becomes a node and connects to others in private and pseudo-anonymous ways. No ID, no credit cards, no personal info. Nodes make up the fabric of the mesh. As it grows more and more powerful, so does the Mask Network. Mask won't stop here. We are creating a suite of products that form a Web 3.0, all fueled by the first decentralized mesh network founded on internet freedom. Access the global web, encrypted and untraceable. Earn cryptocurrency. No more ISP spying. Open source. Built on Ethereum. Mask is the decentralized internet powered by you. Okay, now, outside of it being built on Ethereum. <laughs> um, but soon, with the ERC-20 converter, maybe we'll see something like this pop up on Cardano soon. But uh, outside of that, I've never quite seen anything like this. And... If this turns out to be legitimate, which I'm going to hope and and, and assume that it is, uh, basically, I've never seen kind of a VPN peer-to-peer -peer network service that you, like some of the big things are, you're not subscribing to this as a service using your credit card, your, you know, your ID, you're signing up saying here, this is me, I'm using this service, I'm paying for this service. Basically you're using a utility token that you're buying off exchanges um, and, and you're able to do so pretty anonymously, which I think is a big deal. Now, there are obviously a lot of, when it comes to like, tour browsing and thing i don't really do a lot of that uh much at all if i'm honest i just don't find the need personally uh but for there are legitimate use cases for stuff like this and if you think back in the days of like napster and and a lot of those uh groups that were basically using peer-to-peer -peer technology for file sharing i know private bay or pirate bay um and and many others this is something that utilizes a peer-to-peer -peer technology similar to those, but for much more legitimate purposes. And I think that by utilizing a utility token to get access to this peer-to-peer -peer network that's ultimately going to grow, and not only that, but be able to become a node yourself and generate tokens. So when you're not using bandwidth, you're not using the network, you're helping to support it. And you're being rewarded with the utility token that ultimately is a currency within the network. And I, I personally think this is actually pretty cool. And I, I, like I said many times already, I haven't seen anything quite like it. The software is currently in testing in the NEO phase with great success. They have a test network running with live progress uh, showing users surfing in several countries all in one connection. Uh, these are a couple of side notes that I have that I think are worthwhile. Uh, there were decent speeds and one could watch YouTube on the network. The very first mask test token transaction occurred yesterday in the network, which shows on the blockchain that users will get paid for running the mask node software. We will be quickly working on the next phase called Gemini, which is a sleek new modern look with a full user onboarding process to make installing and running mask as easy as 12 clicks. So let's dive into this a little bit further. Uh, I, I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes, but I really want you guys to know it's mask.ai, which I think is an interesting uh, URL. Do some digging on this. Th these, this is new tech. This is stuff that's it's basically in, in test phases right now, but keep your eye on it. You can obviously subscribe for early access to the network. Uh, access the global web regardless of where you are. Mask will allow you to access content from any part of the globe while remaining undetectable to any malicious parties. Uh, this, is, this could actually be very worthwhile for even crypto security. Not like, not in the sense of, uh, oh, the government's going to know what I'm doing. No, but potential 
uh, hackers and people that are trying to trace what your activities are online so that they can figure out where you're putting stuff so that they can go after it. Um, that's a pretty big deal. Earn cryptocurrency, run mask to access the network and share your connection to earn cryptocurrency in your Ethereum wallet. Big deal, so you can run a node. I actually wouldn't be opposed to running a node myself. Uh, if anything, maybe from a, uh, a VPS server or something. Build apps for freedom. Developers can route app ad requests through Mask and protect their app traffic and user privacy at the same time. Read the docs. Mask is the foundation for the internet of the future. Now, here's the thing. With the, with the, <laughs> with the global climate as it is today, I mean, obviously, we have to ask the question, how much does our government... Uh, wherever you are in the world, really need to know about everything you do. Um, that is a question that honestly, to me, I feel like they're not really gonna be happy until they know every single thing they possibly can on a daily by the minute basis. For what, I don't really know. Uh, you know, the, the let your mind run, I guess, with that. And I feel like while we do need, so I'm one of those people that you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, if you're not doing anything illegal, what's it matter? What's it matter? Well, that's true to an extent, but how far does the reach go? You know, I mean, it's like the more we say, okay, well, I'm not doing anything, so I don't really care. I feel like that just opens up the next step. And at what point do we draw a line? What point do we say, listen, okay, I, I, I work, I eat, I drink a beer, I hang out with the kids, I watch the movies, I go to bed. I don't really need to be monitored 24 seven like I'm some sort of criminal. At what point does it get borderline offensive uh, just in terms of you know what anybody really needs to know about your daily activity, let alone what, what you're doing to your body, uh, which is becoming a really big concern, a big issue right now. So I'm actually all for technology like this. Uh, access the global web, earn crypto, it's open source. Mask software is transparent and auditable to anyone who wants to learn, contribute, and explore its code. Encrypted and untraceable, all traffic is secure and routed through multiple hops on the network anonymously, no data logs. No more ISP spying. Mask is unique, untraceable by internet service providers or other parties with malicious intent. We call this clandestine built on ethereum which okay cool built on ethereum but is there going to be any kind of bottlenecking uh issues as a, as it's you know typically associated with ethereum what happens to the network if something like the next crypto kitties goes crazy and sends transactions through the roof on ethereum causing transaction costs uh and you know and fees through the roof does that affect this network that's a question that i have personally uh but I guess we'll just have to see how that transpires. I I would love to see something like this on Cardano, quite frankly, especially when you're talking about all of the, when you're talking about what this kind of technology stands to offer uh, the populace of, you know, developing countries, um, you know, how, how and I, you know, maybe this is tinfoil hat, I don't know, but when I think about everything Cardano's doing in Africa, how much would Africa potentially become a, uh, a target for malicious activity and how would technology like this help it? Uh, so yeah, to all you mask devs out there, uh, maybe you want to look at Cardano a little bit, uh, even if you're just running a secondary network on a new blockchain that might prove a little more beneficial long term. I'm just hazarding the guests, just trying to be helpful. Mask gives you anonymous and decentralized internet access. Uh, Listen, check this out. If this kind of technology, like, just it sounds exciting to you, which even though I don't necessarily uh, anticipate using something like this, to know that it's there and available, or even if I wanted to support that network and generate passive crypto, uh, you know, that that's something that I, I, I'm actually kind of into. Uh, this is the GitHub, so you're more than welcome to check that out. I will have all the links in the description below of this video. Currently, uh, you know, it's down 25% on the 24 hour, currently trading at 20 cents per token, but there's only 37 and a half million total supply. So there's really not a lot, which I actually like because typically when you see projects like this that are what I would consider very niche, 
you know, they want to blow out with, you know, 30 billion tokens and then sell 10% of them to the general public and hoard a bunch of it and so forth and so on. This doesn't seem like the case. This doesn't look or feel like a, a cash grab, so to speak. This looks like it, it, it could very well be a legitimate effort to build something that I think is going to become more and more useful and prominent um, as it relates to Web 3.0 in the future. So, you know, check this out. Current volume right now is also down about 24% with only $341,000 a day in trading volume. So market cap is very low at 3.7 million. I mean, this is this is baby, this is, this is new. But the question is, if you're looking at technology like this, how likely are you to adopt something like this in your everyday web browsing or your everyday uh, internet activity. If the answer is I would benefit from this greatly, then it's very likely you and many others like you are out there that are likely gonna get involved and maybe we'll see some growth in this project and the token. I don't know, I'm not a psychic, uh, but this definitely looks interesting to me and um, I wholeheartedly am interested in this. So uh, yeah, I mean, let's you know keep me, if you guys out there, if you're using this, if you decide to get involved for some of you bigger tech heads out there that wanna get involved in something on the test network level, you wanna get this, you can grab it now off of GitHub and start using it, but it is still testing. So don't expect like the final product just yet. But I encourage you guys to at least read into it and um, do your own due diligence and discover whether or not it's something you want to get involved with. If you want to look, there's a uh a lot of information and content on Mask uh, or on uh, Medium, so you can check that out. The link will be in the description below. You've got Neo, Gemini, and then Trinity, uh, the different development cycles and phases. So, you know, and then you've got the whole uh, knowledge base portal. Like I said, all of these links will be available below. Just scroll down there and check them out. So I will be right back with how the Bitcoin whale trading code has been cracked and uh, it's absolutely mind boggling. And this is exactly the thing that I've been talking about for years and years and years on, on something that I feel, I always say there's some sort of underlining training, trading algorithm, or there's some sort of system that the general public has not pinpointed. And I'm gonna show you who blew the whistle on this, what it means now, and what I think it means for the future. So I'll see you in just two seconds. And I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for sitting and watching that uh, paid segment from Mask. That actually is some pretty interesting tech. Uh, and I've been watching the comments and kind of participating in the comments a little bit. Um, you know, there, there's definitely, uh, you know, I'm seeing ETH 2.0 better be good for the sake of all Maxi's hearts. Uh, I, I just don't see that. I don't see that. And I saw another comment uh, about, uh, you know, playing World of Warcraft and basically having a heads up and understanding the potential value of virtual currency. Uh, I got news for you. I saw the value of virtual currency back in the days of Ultima Online as uh, I saw people basically selling Ultima Online gold for like $75 per mil. Million. Okay, uh, so yeah, and, and, and there have been so many people who have who've generated significant amounts of money just by selling, uh, you know, gold and, and items and things like that uh, from Ultima Online. I, that's when I got into EverQuest and I would see people selling accounts and swords and all kinds of stuff in EverQuest for real money. And it used to blow my mind. Um, and, and even the first time I discovered Bitcoin, I just thought it was a gimmicky way of, of facilitating transactions for in-game items uh, without getting in trouble from, you know, ELUA or whatever the hell they call it. Just basically the company's trying to stop people from making, uh, you know, money from selling virtual goods w from within game, which personally, I think that if, you, if you're able to grind out time, the time it takes to get, or you get lucky or whatever, and you're able to acquire these items within a virtual world, you should have every right to do whatever you want with them. Uh, and if there's a secondary market, um, then, you know, cool. Is this live? Yes, it is live, but I pre-recorded the segment for mask. Um, just to make sure that I could, like, if I needed to cut it down at all or, or uh, keep it down within a certain time frame. I went over the time a little bit, but that's just more for them. So good, good on them. Now, we're going to be talking about Richard D. Wyckoff. Now, before I do this, I want to credit this gentleman. Uh, I've never seen him before. He's only at 58.9 thousand subscribers on YouTube, and he goes by Uncomplication. Now, 
the video he did on April 25th, Bitcoin manipulation in 2021, textbook Wyckoff distribution exposed, is a very masterful video, in my opinion. And I'm going to be going over, I, he's had so many views, 348,000 views for this video. And uh, so I wanted to make sure that I credited him because it's because of him that I've got everything that I'm about to show you today, okay? So maybe go follow him, uh, subscribe to his channel and, and leave some comments on his amazing video. I don't know where he, I don't know if he just happened across this uh, distribution scheme or how he put the two together, but he basically did exactly what I've been trying to do since I got into crypto. Because since, since the beginning, I've always felt that there was some sort of underlining strategy, whether through artificial intelligence, uh, some sort of complicated algorithmic bot that's trading the market. I don't know, I didn't know, but now I have a much better idea. Uh, especially now with the institutions in the space doing their thing, um, this is this is this is mind blowing stuff. And I'm going to get into a little more detail uh, than the other gentleman did, just in case there's anybody out there that just wants to, uh, you know, be exposed to some of these things. Um, from his position, Mr. Wyckoff observed numerous retail investors being repeatedly fleeced. Consequently, he dedicated himself to instructing the public about the real rules of the game as played by the large interests or the smart money, quote unquote. In the 1930s, he founded a school which would later become the Stock Market Institute. The school's central offering was a course that integrated the concepts that Wyckoff had learned about how to identify large operators, accumulation and distribution of stock, and with how to take positions in harmony with these big players. His time-tested insights are as valid today as they were when first articulated. And you're gonna see that this is virtually uncanny. I'm gonna show you. Um, so this article breaks down everything and I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna get into this, but what I'm gonna show you first, we've got all these charts here. We've got uh, accumulation. This is an accumulation phase, uh, schematic one. Then we've got another accumulation schematic two, which kind of breaks down some variable, variable to the first one. Then we have distribution. Distribution is ultimately what happens when they are looking to exit large positions over a period of time, um, but maintain the market to where they want it to be. What's funny is, if you look at this chart, um, I'm gonna show you the other side of this. This is it right here. And this yellow line that you see flowing through these candles is virtually identical to this chart. And I can't show them to you uh, side by side, but you can reference it on your own. And um, yes, this is exactly what has just transpired. Uh, you can say basically from February, uh, February 25th to basically now. Uh, and, and it's absolutely mind boggling how descriptive this is, like how, how pinpoint accurate it, it actually is. Now, um, I, don't, I don't even know how you manipulate the market in such a way to match this virtually identically, but we're gonna take a look. So um, we're gonna go into the beginning of this. And we're gonna dive in, dive in a little bit. Now, five-step approach to the market. The Wyckoff, Wyckoff method involves a five-step approach to stock selection and trade entry, which can be summarized as follows. Determine the present position and probable future trend of the market. Number two, select stocks in harmony with the trend. Number three, select stocks with a cause that equals or exceeds your minimum objective. Number four, determine the stock's readiness to move. Number five, time your commitment with a turn in the stock market index. So, Wyckoff's composite man. 
Based on his years of observations of the market activities of large operators, Wyckoff taught that the composite man carefully plans, executes, and concludes his campaigns. Notice the word campaign. Each one of these series of phases is its own individual campaign, whether it's accumulation or distribution. The composite man attracts the public to buy a stock in which he has already accumulated a sizable line of shares by making many transactions involving a large number of shares. In effect, advertising his stock by creating the appearance of a broad market. I think you'll be able to recognize some of that actually happening almost in real time while a lot of the people in the institutional space uh, were fudding the market, trying to basically tell everybody, oh, it's a scam and it's a this, it's a that. And now look at them. One must study individual stock charts with the purpose of judging the behavior of the stock and the motives of those large operators who dominate it. Again, another key word, dominate it, because that's what they do. They're dominating the market. With study and practice, one can acquire the ability to interpret the motives behind the action that a chart portrays. Wyckoff and his associates believe that if one could understand the market behavior of the composite man, one could identify many trading and investment opportunities early enough to profit from them. So, according to Wyckoff, the markets can be understood and anticipated through detailed analysis of supply and demand, which can be ascertained from studying price action, volume, and time. As a broker, he was in a position to observe the activities of highly successful individuals and groups who dominated specific issues. Consequently, he was able to decipher via the use of what he called vertical bar and figure, point and figure charts the future intentions of those large interests. And he, and he kind of breaks down what's going on. Three Wyckoff laws. Wyckoff chart-based methodology rests on three fundamental laws that affect many aspects of analysis. These include determining the markets and individual stocks, current and potential future directional bias, selecting the best stocks to trade long or short, identifying the readiness of a stock to leave a trading range and projecting price targets in a trend from a stock a stock's behavior in a trading range these laws inform the analysis of every chart and the selection of every stock to trade number one law the law of supply and demand determines the price direction number two the law of cause and effect helps the trader and investor set price objectives by gauging the potential extent of a trend emerging from a trading range Three, the law of effort versus results provides an early warning of a possible change in a trend in the near future. Analysis of trading ranges, so forth and so on. Now, the accumulation phase, this is one of the first accumulation phase, you're gonna see the lines. Okay, now I'm going to assume, you know, the, the, the gentleman, uh, uncomplicated, I, I can't remember his name, um, but the gentleman that, that first kind of broke this, uh, he ended in like April 25th, right? And so if we look at the chart here, April 25th is basically right about here where this line ends. And from there, there's a phase E. Now, phase E, we can see uh, basically just kind of went sideways for the most part and then dipped further down. There could be a continuation of this downward momentum on the Bitcoin chart, but we don't know yet what this is gonna actually happen, or we don't know exactly what's gonna come of this. However, once this does turn around, I assume we're gonna enter the next accumulation schematic um, that we see here. We can see that this, this downtrend here, and then we start getting a reversal, right? Now, as you can hear, see here, you can see preliminary support. Preliminary support where substantial buying begins to provide pronounced support after a prolonged down move. Volume increases and price spread widens, signaling that the down move may be approaching its end. So that's basically what we're hoping to see here. And we can see that we did get an uptick on this candle. Now this, this is a daily candle, so this hasn't concluded yet because this is today on the 20th my hope is we wicked all the way down into the 26,000 remember not long ago we were at a $64,000 bitcoin and we plummeted from there so hopefully this here is the conclusion of that and we're starting to turn around into the next accumulation phase 
SC, which is where we end up here, is the selling climax, the point at which all selling and dumping is done and we, we start getting a true reversal, which is where I hope we're at now. I hope we're at this SC point. Automatic rally, automatic rally. You can see we're kind of getting a bit of a rally here, but it doesn't look super strong just yet, but hopefully that builds over the next couple of days. We'll see. And then you get a secondary test. So basically when the when the price starts to turn around, you know, we, we might come back up here and start testing that initial support uh, or resistance rather, and we might bounce off of that. We might bounce back down for that, that second kind of dip, uh, which you can see here and then we can shoot up from there. So after the secondary test, which is right here, all right? So, and then there's a the secondary, okay. So note, springs or shakeouts usually occur late within a, uh, a trading, let's see, what's TR trading range? Uh, and, and allow the stock's dominant players to make a definitive test of available supply before a markup campaign unfolds. Test. Large operators always test the market for supply through a trading range, NSTs and Springs, and at key points during a price advance, if considerable supply emerges on a test, the market is often not ready to be marked up. A spring is often followed by one or more tests. A successful test indicating that further price increase will follow typically makes a higher low on lesser volume. Mm. Sign of strength is SOS, LPS, last point of support, back up. So then you've got an accumulation schematic number two. You can see it's a little bit different. So basically what we're, what we're gonna start doing, and I'm gonna start referencing this, uh, I'm gonna post this link right in, this, in the uh, chat right here, because if you guys wanna go and bookmark that, uh, school dot stock chart do that just just check it out reference it to the current chart uh of, of bitcoin's price action as we continue to move forward and try to figure out <clears throat> at what point do we change phases or do we get out of the distribution phase into the next accumulation phase and which accumulation phase are we looking at and you can reference all of that on this chart then we go into the distribution phase and that breaks everything down there so I encourage you to study this. I am gonna be studying this um, quite a bit more, but I don't wanna get into you know a two hour video breaking every little nuance of this down, but I wanted to point you to it if you haven't seen it yet, uh, kind of give you a heads up that this exists and this is something that I would definitely be keeping my eye on when it comes to Bitcoin trading and at least potentially being able to get an understanding of what may be coming. Because as we know, Bitcoin is typically the, the point of the spear when it comes to the crypto market and whatever happens with Bitcoin, happens with everything else except for the blow off top in the altcoins market at the peak of the cycle. Uh, and if you look at this chart here, this is something I was kind of doing where I was mapping out the ebbs and flows of the last several cycles. And, um, you know, listen, you know, we're talking right here, this was the last peak after coming up from a low of $156, we went up over 13,000% to 20,000 before dropping down 86% when everybody threw their arms up and said Bitcoin's one big scam. That's the uneducated. Those are the people that don't really know what's going on and there's a lot of new people just like that in the market buying Dogecoin because somebody that they look up to is talking about it on Twitter. It's nonsensical. So. And it really doesn't have any utility other than like potentially sending value from point A to point B, which just about any cryptocurrency on the market does. It's just a matter of how much value does each of those tokens have uh, at, at any given point in time. And then after that, you can see we've already risen over 2000% from the $2,800, $3,000 low um, of this previous bull mar or bear market. This little dip here is where we're at now we're sitting here around $30,000. And I expect us to drive all the way back up. If we were to just go up 500% from here, it takes us to around $160,000, $170,000. And I think that there's a very strong potential for us to go much higher. I mean, think about it. If this is a two peak market, this was a two peak market here, and this was a total of over 16,000% from the bottom in 2011 to the peaks 
uh, or the, the, the second peak of 2013. All right. So even if we were to cut that by a third every new cycle, we're definitely potentially, I would say, uh, definitely potentially looking at at least a 200, at least a solid six figure Bitcoin, somewhere around the $250,000 range to 280, which is something that I predicted like two years ago. So we'll just have to wait and see how things play out. Um, but uh yeah guys i mean this is absolutely mind-blowing and uh start studying this if you're at all interested in keeping tabs with the market uh looking at cardano's price action against ethereum's value doesn't seem to be doing too bad we kind of peaked up here a little bit uh and you know we're doing all right wicked down pretty low uh yesterday but uh cardano itself is on an upswing hopefully we get back above this trend line because that's really what i want to see i want to see us i mean it looks like we bounced off of it uh a little bit earlier this is a four hour chart so we bounced off of it came down and now we're kind of getting uh like a bit of a doji uh like an indecision candle i want to see us bounce back above this which means we'd have to be back above two bucks uh right about here means yeah we'd be at about two dollars and we'd be back on the back on trend back on point ethereum currently at the uh, you know currently it's up i mean it's doing all right i think cardano is growing a little bit faster it's it's gaining momentum a little bit faster than ethereum right now but that could tra change with the drop of a hat so you know you know overall listen it's almost the weekend and we all know that anything can happen over the weekend so just you know play it safe educate yourself definitely dive into this and again you know check out mask if you're into this kind of technology this could be a, a really big deal in the, in the future uh depending on what sort of partnerships and things they're able to gather um but i'll be i'll be keeping tabs on them to see how they do moving forward in the in the bull market and what sort of announcements and things they make they look pretty active so we'll have to wait and see and until next time, guys, thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you again soon. Crow your coins.